So we're going to look at two new gas laws today, the combined gas law and Avogadro's law. So the combined gas law is exactly what it sounds like. It combines the three previous gas laws that we studied, Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's law. So you combine them into a single huge law called the combined gas law. So if you look at the formula here, notice, remember, there are four variables for gases that we look at. Pressure, volume, temperature, and the amount of gas. So for the combined gas law, the only thing that is constant is the amount of gas, the number of molecules. The pressure, volume, and temperature are all changing at once. So the formula is P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. Remember, the ones you can think of as the original, the two as the new set of conditions, or just all the ones are the same set and all the twos are the same set. So we look at a sample problem. A gas at 110 kPa and 30 degrees Celsius fills a flexible container with an initial volume of 2 liters. Remember, putting things down as knowns on the left-hand side is really going to help you determine which formula you need. So notice I write the pressure, 110 kPa, the temperature, and I take that 30 degrees and change it to Kelvin, and the volume, 2 liters. If the temperature is raised, Raise indicates a change to 80 degrees, and the pressure is increased, again a change, to 440 kPa, what is the new volume? So again, I take T2, change that to Kelvin, and then you're simply going to plug in. So the way that you're going to determine that you're using the combined gas law versus any other gas law is with these knowns. You have three variables. You have pressure, temperature, and volume all changing at the same time. So the only gas law that will work is the combined. Remember that to check your units, so pressure's good, temperature pretty much will always be good, and your volume's good as well. So you take your formula, P1V1T1 equals P2V2T2, you plug in your numbers here, solve for V2, and you should get 0.58 liters. Avogadro's principle is named after the same guy that did Avogadro's number. And he stated that equal volumes of gas at the same temperature and pressure contain equal number of particles. This is that idea of 1 mole equals 22.4 liters. So for example, 1,000 relatively large krypton gas particles occupy the same volume as 1,000 much smaller helium particles. The key is the same temperature and pressure, STP. At the same temperature and pressure, Avogadro's principle holds true. So this is also called molar volume, which is the idea that as, at STP, one mole of any gas is equal to 22.4 liters. So we've talked about this enough now. Um, you should be familiar with this. You should be familiar with what STP is. Um, and molar volume is just that conversion. One mole equals 22.4 liters of gas. So another sample problem, calculate the volume that 0.881 moles of a gas at STP will occupy. The key to this problem is STP, standard temperature and pressure. When you see that, you can simply just do a conversion using the 1 mole equals 22.4 liters idea. So I start with what I'm given, 0.881 moles. Notice it doesn't matter what the gas is. Do my molar conversion, I get 19.73 liters. You can only do this at STP. If your temperature and pressure is anything other than 1 atmosphere and 0 degrees Celsius, this will not hold true. Next problem, calculate the volume that 2 grams of methane gas will occupy at STP. So again, STP, a bell should ring in your head, ding, 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 I can use that molar volume. So this is basically um, a normal mole problem. So I'm starting with 2 kilograms um, of methane. I change that to grams here. Then I change it to moles of methane using the molar mass. And then the 22.4 liters equals 1 mole to get 2,791 liters. Avogadro's law takes advantage of this molar volume idea, and it says that the volume of a gas is directly related to the number of moles of a gas. So remember, these are direct. As one goes up, the other goes up. As one doubles, the other doubles. So the formula here is V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Remember, the ones are the original, the twos are the new. So what this is basically saying is the greater the number of moles of gas, the greater the volume they will occupy. And that concludes this lecture.